Proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Hello, welcome back to Furious Driving, and today we're doing a little bit with the Rover Tomcat, which I've just poured tea over. Whoops, now you may remember the last time we did anything with the convertible, the other R8, we decided to nickname him Quentin, as in Tarantino, because he is the hateful eight. Well, as this one, the coupe is the delightful one, possibly the coolest car I own. What is the coolest Quentin Tarantino character? Obviously Jules from Pulp Fiction, so maybe we should start calling the Tomcat Jules. I don't know. But anyway, as a reward to Jules for being such a good car and playing the great chase car in the um, Rover V8 SD1 police car video, you might have seen footage of that in the last video I put up. Also from the now heavily featured Nitro Silver on my channel are these wheels. When we filmed the um, Rover R8 Tourer, the green estate car, a few weeks ago, that was also his car as well. And he had these wheels which came with the car when he bought it. He decided not to fit them, go back to these original standard wheels. Um, and uh, he was selling them, so I decided I would give them a try on the coupe, see how they look, because the later coupes I think did get wheels very similar to this. These are the BRM or Cosmos style. The Cosmos are slightly better made than the BRM wheels, weirdly, I don't know the reason why, but these should be pretty good wheels. Um, so yeah, let's give them a try and see how they go. Now before we get going on that car, first of all, I'll give you an update on the Mercedes, Ugh. because something that's been a little bit time consuming and fiddly are these headlights which I've been doing some soldering on on the kitchen table when everyone else is out and I can sneak carpets inside the house. Um, so yeah, I've now got a full load of wiring inside this um, headlamp cluster, likewise on the passenger one. Very boring. Um, about an hour of me sitting here with a soldering iron scratching my head, so not great TV. Um, but the headlamp holders, the bulb holders, are incredibly tight. I've had to go and buy some different H4 headlight bulbs in the hope they will do up. They don't want to uh, clamp in. They seem like they're a too small a hole for the H4 bulb to go into. Maybe that'll work out later on today. Secondly, people keep asking what's happened with the Volvo. Well, the thing is the Volvo is not on the road and because there's no room to park it here, um, I've stuck it on a friend's drive and I've sawned it because I'm not using it for a month. So I uh, saved uh, 25 pounds a month to keep it taxed. It's off the road for a few weeks just while doing other things on other cars. Here's a little insert to show it does still exist. Right, this video or this clip of video is for all the people who've commented recently said, What's happening with the Volvo? Why have you done anything with the Volvo? Do you still own the Volvo? Well, the Volvo has, whoops, a bit shaky cam. The Volvo has been uh, staying at a friend's house for a couple of weeks because I've got nowhere to put it at the moment. Uh, I've got another car on loan for a test drive and I've just literally run out of space with the um, uh, convertible and everything just being here. So it's living on Sawn, which means no tax on the road for a couple of weeks, uh, at a friend's place in the drive and this is the first startup in I think three weeks I've been neglecting it sorry sorry Volvo oh, nearly. well how'd you like them apples oh and finally finally before we get going yeah, you may have noticed the horrible crackly noises in the last few videos. That has been this thing here. This is the Rode Wireless Go transmitter. It's kind of okay when I'm using it just as a standalone microphone, although the microphone isn't as good as it used to be because it got some rain in it. But a little plug there, where I plug my microphone with the windshield on it, that's kind of dying. And so every time I move and the uh, plug moves a tiny bit, terrible interference. So sorry about that. But big big thank you to all channel patreons and channel members your sort of channel membership and patreon money this month has gone into buying a new sennheiser one of these things so that's apparently very high quality it will be with me any day now so videos shot from next week on hopefully won't have the crackles but there are a few videos still in the offing kind of coming through the system so right now let's go and get a jack and do some stuff to jewels now, I'm not just changing the wheels today, there's a couple of other little jobs that need to be done. First of all, last time I was playing with uh, the gas coilovers in here, I was trying to lower them in a hurry, I went the wrong way, so I actually raised the car ever so slightly, which was, what I like to call, counterproductive. I should probably check the subproduct all the time myself. <clears throat> and secondly, this crust here has got a lot worse over the last couple of months, so I'll get the wheel off and give this a bit of a undercoat and rust proof because I don't want that to go through because the sills are a real weak point on these cars. I 
one thing I do like, dislike about this car is it's got the locking wheel nuts, it's got the nut covers on some, nut covers not on others, so you wind up having to use three different bolt sizes or socket sizes to get the wheels off, which is pretty annoying. I still absolutely love this uh, Draper jack, it's brilliant. Oops. Before I chuck these wheels aside, these tyres have got an amazing tread on them still. They are like Semperates, I think they are, Semperates Speed Lifes, and they've had an amazing life. But the thing is, they're nearly 10 years old. Um, they're starting to crack a tiny bit in the sidewall, so there's loads of life in them, but you know, they're not as good as they could have been. But it does mean that when I think I send the convertible for an MOT, I do have a nice spare set of wheels with good legal tyres on that I can put the car on so I can at least get a ticket on it and then decide what to do with its wheels after that. Now, oh dear me, what a rust trap. That is literally, quite literally a rust trap because this, oh man, it's just full of dirt. And that dirt is trapping rust. Oh dear me. Yeah, let's get a wire brush on that, take this back to metal and get some rust killer on that. This car does need a complete respray. That is a plan for the future for this car. I actually hit the wrong button on the camera the last bit. I did actually just uh, have the grinder out and got all the grotty paint off. Trouble doing work and camera work at the same time is that you do sometimes get bits wrong on the camera because you're looking at the work, not the camera, which is a shame. I found a couple of little holes just there, perforations in the, in the metal. Now this car is due. For, oops, let's try and look at this on my jack for some proper full bare metal paint at some point in its not too distant future. I haven't got a date for that, but that is absolutely on the cards. So I don't want to be doing lots of little dodgy repairs right now. I kind of like to get it all done in one big hit, maybe by a professional who can weld. First of all, I'll put some rust killer on this just to prevent that from getting any worse. I must buy small brushes. Now, how long does this take, I wonder? It's 20 minutes to do that, so while that's doing that, I will deal with the shock absorbers. Now, last time, I was in a hurry, and I counted the wrong direction. So to make this thing go up, I need to turn it, hang on, which way is it? Because I got it wrong last time. I should probably go and watch my last video, actually, shouldn't I? Well, I just watched back the video of the last time I did this, um, and it was, you know, apart from being rainy and wet and horrible, I was turning it that way, which raises the car, not lowers the car, so I need to go that way. I'll give it 10 to 15, I mean 15 turns, complete winds on all four corners, and hopefully that'll get the car back down to where I want it to be, which is not too low, just giving a slightly more aggressive stance, and not really, uh, not hurting the ride too much either. So it's kind of a nice, comfortable thing. Hmm. Oh, I forgot what pain this was to do, especially on the rear of the car. I need to mark that. Undoubtedly this will wipe off before I've got even two turns done. It's worth a try. Well that was kind of inevitable, wasn't it? At least my arm won't go rusty. Neither with my t-shirt. I settled on five rotations in the end, partly because I think that'll give me a slightly softer, more pliant and uh, forgiving ride, and mostly though because I got bored. And I've got to do this on three other shocks still. Once it's on the ground, I can see how low it looks, or how high it looks, and come back and reassess my decision. Now, this has had a little time of the uh, old, what's it called, hammerite rust remover gel attacking it, and there is a small perforation in the top of the metal there. Um, now, I could go and get the melty wire out and spend the next couple of hours faffing around, cutting this grinding, this, making a smooth, solid repair, and uh, doing an awful lot of proper, proper 
bodywork stuff. However, this car is going to get a full bare metal respray at some point in the next year, probably, and will be repaired by someone who can do it better than me, in all honesty. And since I'm not selling the car, it's not going to be being used over the winter. So, yes, I know it's a bodge. Don't bother telling me in the comments. I already know this, but it's going to rain. I want the car solid. It's going to be rust free, and it's not going to be perforated if it is. The rust has been stopped, which is good. And it'll be fine for a while. The significant points here are rust has been stopped. I'm not trying to trick anyone by selling it as a repaired car, and it's going to go full bare metal at some point in the future anyway. Also rather pertinent is how come I've got a brand new pack of P38 in the garage? I don't know where that came from. I must have bought it for something and not used it. Sorry, I'm trying to, struggling to open this out of shot. I've got a tiny, tiny stub of a screwdriver instead of a big screwdriver. That was a silly thing to do. I decided to multitask, use my time wisely. And uh, while, the, while, while the other side of the car, the filler is going off, this side, oh man, damn it, that's stupid nut covers were such a pain. They're kind of wedged on, you can't get them off anymore. Um, I'll take this wheel off and start dealing with uh, the other shock. I must get some new wheel nuts for this car because these are mangled and refit them without these stupid little chrome cover things. It came from the factory that way and it's really annoying. Now I just have to try and remember to go in the same direction as I was before. Easier said than done. For a bear of very little brain. And there, tiny spot in the center of the frame, Spitfire. This is why you have two of these things in your toolkit. Ah. Now I won't bother showing you all of this because it's even more boring to watch than it is to do. So here are the two wheel options side by side. That's the original coupe non-turbo wheels. I think the turbo's got these wheels as well on the right. And these on the left are 16 inch Rover Cosmos wheels, which are the same style as they fitted to the BRMs bit newer. Weirdly they look bigger but when you stack them on top of each other they're exactly the same size. Right so that's adjusted by five turns of the, or five turns of the ring. So this corner gets to be the first corner to get the new wheels on and see how it looks. This particular wheel, um, it's tire I should say, it's a pretty decent one. It's a Bridgestone Potenza which are really nice tires. Um, it is quite worn. It's about a millimetre or two millimetres away from the wear mark so it's um, not got a great deal of life left in it but it is road legal at the very least. So I can test drive it and see what I think of it. This probably isn't harsh enough. I'm going in with some 600 grit. Just to take it up. Surprisingly, it's actually quite a good repair as far as my repairs go. They're generally pretty awful. There is a ton more access here in the front. So, oh, God. Oh, fly. That was a wasp. It wasn't. So much easier, so much less potential for hurting yourself. Really hope I'm turning it the right way. God, that was really easy. But if this looks like something I've brode over when it comes off the lift, I'm going to be really unhappy. Well, this is good news. This one's got a Continental Sport Contact 2 on it, which is a really good tyre, but again, it's uh, only got a few millimetres of tread left and it is a little bit cracked. So, once again, it's um, good to have it rather than something really cheap and nasty, but oops. I don't like having mismatched tyre treads on a car either. It doesn't give you particularly good handling. But while we're just checking whether I like the look of the wheels, we can be happy with that for the time being. I know I'm using an ordinary socket on an impact driver. I have got a few proper size, I'm um, sorry, proper impact sockets now but only a couple, and not in all the sizes yet. I will correct that at some point.
I do hope that ride height is because it's still jacked up really high at the back. Well, that's kind of there. It's not perfect, but the uh, fairly abysmal shade of blue from the Halford's rattle can will more than make up and disguise the not great for the work. A banana milkshake has appeared. Very curious. Yeah, the first coat of undercoat always shows just how badly you've done your prep work. In this case, it's fairly abysmal. Quick splash of regular prana. It's fairly exposed down here, so the more layers of paint, the better, really. So I will have to go and redo my nice black stuff in here, because that's all undercoated now. Ha, right, I'm not going to do a close-up on this, because as we've seen from the bonnet, the colour match on this is fairly atrocious. Oh, come on. Oh, great. That's really going to help the whole look of the thing. Hmm. I guess aerosols go off after a while. <laughs> this would probably send some mud's falling into it. <sighs> Do you get a better finish than this? This would probably look better if I put it on with a paintbrush. Oh my word. Oh. I have my fortune telling skills coming to play here. I foresee sandpaper and a trip to Halfords in my future. Oh, gross. Stupid paint. Right, now let's fit an exciting new wheel. Ah, oh, dear me. Right, so now we have the last, or the third, of our new wheels. And this one is wearing, what's this wearing? A Kenda Radial, Kenda Kaiser. It's rotational. I've never heard of this brand before, so let's hope they're not terrible. Actually, this one's got quite a lot of tread on it. It's a lot more tread than the other ones. So I've got good brands with no tread, unheard of brands with lots of tread. If I decide I'm gonna like these wheels, I think maybe I'll just change all four of them for a nice new set of tires. Treat the coupe. So what do you reckon? The new look, it is a smidge lower, maybe even only half a smidge. The uh, gauge for how low the car is, it was three finger widths wide um, between the top of the tire and the bottom of the front arch before. It's now about two and a half finger widths. I think I could stand to go down probably at least another five winds of that thing next time I take the wheels off. But what do you reckon? It's a bit of that kind of Rover 800 coupe look with these slightly more curvaceous wheels. The car is a very angular kind of design, so I'm not sure if curvy wheels are a good look on it or not. I do quite like it. I'll see how it grows on me for the next few days and then make a decision as to whether to keep it on there or not. I do like the bigger wheels. They fill the arches just a bit better. Make the car doesn't look a bit more kind of uh, and purposeful. Now the reason I'm showing you this side of the car, not that side of the car, is because the paint is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the squirt dribbling out. I've not been down to Halfords yet. I've got to go and do something else right now. And it wouldn't hurt to give these wheels a minor refurbish. There's only a few little nooks and nooks and scrapes, knocks and scrapes on them. They generally look pretty good. I've given this, this is a land sale tire. Slightly dubious of the quality of that one. Again, okay, reasonable tread, but a random tread pattern again from the other three. Uh, but I've given it a squirt of um, Diamond Bright Rejuvenate, which is my favorite of their products. It's absolutely gorgeous stuff. And that's come out looking really, really, really quite nice and shiny actually, very more than a little presentable, I have to say. Don't forget, Diamond Bright are doing 20% off if you use the code FD20 during September. Link is in the description below to diamondbright.co.uk. Um, so yeah, this is looking pretty good. It's not a bad morning's tinkering really, is it? We've made a bit of a change to the car, I might. I think I will, yeah, I will go down just another half a centimetre on this, just to close that gap a bit. Overall though, I'm pretty happy. I think the next time I do anything to these wheels though, it will be to go and acquire a new set of matching tyres for it, <laughs> at the very least. So of course, just as I was wrapping up and about to say thank you and goodbye, a car came through and I had to go and move this. So now you're getting a nice rear shot, so you get another angle on what this thing looks like, which I, actually the more I look at it, the more it's growing on me. I'm actually rather, rather pleased with this. 
little day's work. Right, if you enjoyed this, please hit like, please hit subscribe, the usual gubbins. If you want to help support the channel, then please have a look at Patreon or uh, channel memberships, because that helps us do things like buy parts for the cars. Um, I had to buy a new microphone this week, because this one is on the way out. And the memberships and Patreons make a big difference to keeping the channel going, so I can go and justify and afford to go and buy like 200 pound microphones when they just suddenly stop working. Take care guys, I'll see you all again very soon. Mm-hmm.